every bar sa kisu babay. Tayo magsaya itaas ang kamay. Sama sama tayo magsaya. Kalimutan mo na ang problema. From left to the right ay sumayaw. Lahat ay angat. Walang madadang kahit ganon katagal. We still kicking. Walang papatay kasi ang dito parin. Thank you, arigato gusay mas. Salamat sa iyong gilas. Ginha.
on behalf of the Kabangan family and the ALC Media Group, we give thanks to the Lord for allowing us to continue the story started 30 years ago by my father, the late ambassador and chairman emeritus of the ALC Group of Companies, Antonio L. Kabangon Chua. It is the story of how a small magazine got built on the strength of an incomparable friendship between a man of business and a man of words. This is the story of how they both cherished literature and vowed to nurture excellent literary works in the pages of the magazine. Through the best of times, in the worst of times, we continue this story. This is the story of the Philippines graphic. If we are profoundly concerned with our own society, our writing will also be a commentary on our society. This has been tradition almost for Filipino writers to do so, as exemplified by Rizal, who towers above all Filipino writers. What is literature and the writer? The writer is a nation's keeper of memory, without which there can be no nation. This demands honesty. If we are keepers of memory, we must be rooted deeply in our own native soil and be the voice of our people. Sometime I wrote back an advice to young writers. Permit me now to repeat the most important points I made in that article. They need, they need to be true to oneself, to be engaged when our time and place, and thereby assume an identity which commends us and to our people and to the world as well. An identity that is truly unique. Universal but always is in other words, be Filipino. We started by giving ample pages to short stories and poetry written in English by Filipino writers, young and old. We went a step further by awarding the best of these short stories and poetry. And then COVID-19 happened. With the suspension of Nick Joaquin Literary Awards, our publishing of short stories and poetry in English came to a standstill. Almost two years later, in February 22, we came back with the generous support of San Miguel Corporation. Instead of just pages for literature, we now devote an entire monthly magazine for the excellent works of Filipino writers of short stories and poetry in English. And to help all of you out there who wish to learn how to write short stories, it is my privilege to welcome you to the Philippines Graphic Reader Business Mirror Masterclass on Literature.
Hello everyone, my name is Trixie Le Bonatan. Let me tell you about the wonderful giveaways that viewers like you can bring home after this webinar. Those of you who choose to type greetings, messages, or questions on our Facebook message screen while the webinar is ongoing will have a chance to win a prize. We will be giving out five of these beautiful watches and we will also raffle 10 Philippines graphic reader bundles, each containing the reader's February, March, and April issues for free. Along with that, we will also give out a 400 gram pack of golden oats oatmeal. Aside from getting food for the brain, you'll also get food for the tummy. As you know, the Philippines Graphic Reader is the first nationally circulated literary magazine in English in the Philippines. So let your names be known, your greetings be read, and your questions be answered. This is Trixie Bonotan, and you are watching Aba, Gusto Mo Pala Magsulat, Tips and Trade Secrets on How to Write the Short Story. I'll be back soon. Good morning. I am your host, Mara P. Elanot, editor of Philippines Graphic Reader. And here is the publisher of the Philippines Graphic and the Business Mirror, Mr. T. Anthony C. Cabangon, to deliver the welcome remarks to our Masterclass webinar. Aba, gusto mo pala magsulat. Good morning and welcome. We are so glad to start the first Masterclass webinar on literature of the Philippines Graphic and the business mirror. I said, as I, excuse me, as I mentioned in our audiovisual presentation, this is a master class webinar. It's our latest effort to promote Philippine literature in English. We know for a fact that uh, the country's top schools have literature webinars of their own. The best literary writers in English speak in these webinars. But these webinars tend to be accessed mostly by students from the top schools. What we in the Philippines Graphic want to do is to somehow extend the reach of the literature webinar. We want to build a, a working literature partnership with schools from the north to south of the Philippines. We want to become a meeting ground where the greatest literary writers of the country can meet and teach a possible thousands of students who, because of distance and circumstance, are not able to listen and learn from the likes of a Dr. Butch Dalisay or a Charleston Ong for free. In short, we want to democratize access to the literature masterclass webinar. In doing so, in our small way, help in popularizing our Filipino writers para lubos kang makilala. Excuse me, para lubos pang makilala sila ng madla, pati na ang kanilang mga obra. We are fortunate to have our host and co-host, multi-awarded writer Mara Pia Lanot and the editor of the Philippines Graphic Reader. Mara is joined by her son, Chris Lanot Lakaba, a multi-awarded journalist and a Palanca winner for poetry. We thank our sponsors, San Miguel Corporation, Nickel Asia Corporation, and Sharp Philippines for their institutional support, have made our efforts to promote Philippine literature in English possible. We welcome all our viewers 
And to all the beginning writers out there, we say, Aba, gusto mo pala magsulat. Thank you. Walang makin kay Chris. Hindi ko marinig. Hello, can you hear me now? Hello, can you hear me now? Yes. Right. <laughs> Thank you very much, Anton. Uh, the Philippines Graphic, and for that matter, the Philippines Graphic Reader is really bent on reaching out to colleges and universities for these literature webinars. By forging partnerships with the schools, we hope to get more students interested in this first of our series of free masterclass webinars, webinars on literature. Mukhang ang maraming interesado sa webinar. More than a thousand people uh, registered as of yesterday. And majority ng mga nag-register are students. We have students from Rizal Technological University, UP Diliman, UP Los Baños, UP Baguio, UP Rural High School, De La Salle University Taft, Far Eastern University, University of Santo Tomas, De La Salle College of St. Benilde, Christ Baptist Academy in Muntinlupa, Datamex College of St. Adeline in Quezon City, Sacred Heart Academy of Pasig, and Malasiki Agno, uh, Agno Valley College in Pangasinan, to name a few. Nakakataba talaga ng puso ang makita students are really interested to learn about writing good literature. At nakaka-inspire that students from schools north to south of the Philippines have registered. From Mindanao, we have students from the Mindanao State University of Iligan, Institute of Technology, and Ateneo de Zamboanga University. From the Visayas, we have students from Haro National High School in Iloilo, Cebu Technological University, University of Cebu, and Holy Name University in Tagbilaran, Bahol. Salazon and Dami. And Dami, from the north, we have students from the Divine Word College of Banged, Abra University of St. Louis in Tugigarao, Bataan National High School, St. Jerome Bataan Polytechnic University of the Philippines, St. Jerome Emiliani School of Dinalupihan Bataan, and Landa City High School in Zambales. From South Luzon, 
were students from Palawan State University, Bicol University, and Camarinisor Polytechnic Colleges in Bicol. From Calabarzon, we have students from San STA College Santa Rosa in Laguna, St. Edward Integrated School in Cavite, Wild Dove Home School Program, Batanga State University, and St. Bridget College in Batanga City. With regard to Calabarzon, we have a lot of high school and elementary students from Binyan, Laguna. They come from Binyan City Science and Techno Technology High School, Binyan Secondary School of Applied Academics, Acobos Z. Gonzalez Memorial School, Southville Langkiwa National High School, De La Paz National High School, School, Malab Malaban Elementary School, and Loma Elementary School. The Philippines Graphic is ac actively pursuing partnerships with schools to encourage student participation in our master class webinars on literature. That is why, at this point, we are proud to introduce to our viewers Dr. Edna Fauro Agustin, the Department of Education School Division Superintendent of Binyan City in Laguna. Good morning, Dr. Agustin. Good morning, Mara. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. Dr. Agustin, can you tell us about the schools under your supervision in Binyan? Yeah, we have... Uh... 38 schools under my supervision in uh, SDO Binyan City with total population of 41,697. And of this 41,697, 27,323 are junior high school students from our public schools and 6,540 junior high school students from the private schools. Dr. Agustin, can you tell us about the significance of this webinar in terms of teaching literature appreciation and literature writing to students? Well, basically, it's uh, the way we see this, uh, this webinar is that this is our way of teaching our students uh, good English. And it is also a good vehicle for teaching the English language. More importantly, it will give our students a chance to learn short story writing. And as for our teachers, this webinar will motivate them to think of possible topics that will somehow open the minds of our learners, our students, to appreciate literature, particularly the Philippine literature, and somehow to write fiction stories. Thank you. We agree with you 100%, Dr. Agustin. We would also like to thank Dr. Mildred Dina of Southville High School, Nanette Lacuarin of Southville Elementary School, and Education Program Supervisor Raquel L. Azur for encouraging the students to participate. This webinar will definitely benefit students and non-students alike. We would like to announce at this point that all our viewers who registered shall be given a certificate of attendance within a week after the webinar. And before we begin the, lec the, the, the lectures of our esteemed speakers, here is a word from Trixie Leigh Bonota. Hello again. We would like to inform our viewers that your questions shall be highlighted on screen. It will be seen and answered by our speakers. At the end of the webinar, we will raffle the names of those who sent their questions and from there get five winners of our watches. Viewers who type their comments shall be entitled to the raffle for the bundles of the February, March, and April issues of the Philippines Graphic Reader. This is Trixie Lebonotan, and you are watching the first masterclass webinar on literature by the Philippines Graphic and Business Mirror. We, we wish to inform our viewers 
the question and answer portion of this webinar shall come after the two lectures have finished. Our speakers for this afternoon require no introduction. To give the first lecture is Dr. Jose Butch Dalisay, multi-awarded poet, fiction writer, and academician. Dr. Dalisay has published over 40 books of fiction and non-fiction. He is Professor Eberitus of English at the University of the Philippines, from where he retired as Vice President for Public Affairs in 2019. He has won numerous awards for his writing and was nominated for the National Artist Award in 2021. He is currently working on his third novel while writing a history of Philippine accounting and editing 12-year, 12 12-volume 12 history of UP Manila. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Jose Butch Dalisay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mara, uh, Chris. Magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. Uh, and thanks for this opportunity to uh, uh, talk for the next 20 minutes about something I really enjoy doing, which is writing the, the short story. Uh, since we just have these 20 minutes, uh, I will be taking, I will be talking about the very basics of short story writing. We can talk some more in the, in the Q&A, because something like this really takes a uh, you know, several semesters of, of classroom work uh, to do. Uh, however, again, uh, what I will give you this morning will just be a, a, a sampler. Kumbaga, patikim lang, you know? It's the art ng short story. And, and, and while this will be in English, uh, uh, the things I will tell you also apply, of course, to writing in Filipino and and other languages. And one of the first one of the first things that we need to ask ourselves is why the short story? Why not why not the poem? Why not the essay, for example? Uh, the the essay uh, is is something that you are all familiar with as uh, as students. Uh, you know, maybe maybe you write essays in the form of what your teachers will st still call uh, theme papers, but but the essay is is probably more familiar to you than than the short story from the writing point of view. In the essay, we we have an idea, we develop that idea, and then we kind of repeat it at the end. But the basic difference between the essay and the short story is that the short story can talk about the same topics or the same themes, except that it uses concrete situations and things. I mean, for example, let us say you want to write a piece because you feel strongly about it, about about poverty and injustice in this country. You, know, you feel very, very strongly motivated to say something about it. And so you sit down and you ask yourself, okay, uh, the first thing that comes to mind could be the essay, in which case you say, okay, I will write down my observations about, about how poor most of our people remain about how justice is very difficult to find, especially if you're a poor person. Uh, and, and so in the essay, you will use words like justice, poverty, freedom, democracy, human rights, big words, big ideas. And that's okay. I mean, that's okay in the essay. However, in the short story, you really can't do that. You don't do that. Uh, all of those words uh, really should not appear in a good story about poverty and justice. And why is that? And that's because in the short story, we let the situation and the characters uh, make the argument for you. You do not... You do not say outright in the end, 
and so poverty is uh, poverty and injustice go together, and so their solution must also uh, must also address both problems. That's very abstract. You know? But what you need to do is to show the actual situation of someone who is who is poor and who tries to seek justice but cannot find it because more powerful and richer people uh, deny him or her that justice. Kailangan maitakita yan in, in a real kuno situation. Now, I say real kuno because it's imaginary. In other words, it didn't really happen. And that's, that's the second most important distinction between the essay and, and fiction. Because fiction is make-believe. Kunya, kunyarian. Iniisip lang natin na nangyari ito, pero hindi naman nangyari. Although the irony of it is that sometimes fiction can seem more real than reality itself. And I'll give you an example. Uh, all of you have, have had to read Jose Rizal's Noli and Fili, right? Uh, and you also read, unfortunately, I don't think this is mandatory anymore, although it should be, you also read history. And so you know something about the history of, of the revolution of 1896. Now, if I ask you, what can you tell me about a character like Graciano Lopez Jaina you know, or Miguel Malvar? Very few of you will be able to give me good answers to that because you don't really know them. However, if I ask you, can you tell me something about Padre Salvi or Maria Clara or Doña Victorina? You know, ayun mas masasagot niyo pa yun. Because Jose Rizal, using fiction, using make-believe, was able to make that part of our history come alive better than the historians have done. And this is why fiction has a stronger emotional impact, and not just emotional, but also intellectual impact on the reader because it engages us. Masarap basahin. We feel engaged and involved in the dramatic situation unfolding. So, so now this is very important. Uh, fiction is make believe. Fiction is therefore, gawa-gawa lang, katang isip lang, fiction is therefore the art of lying and lying very well. In a sense, parang nagsisinungaling tayo kasi hindi naman talaga nangyari ito. However, this is paradoxically lying in the service of the truth because fiction makes us understand and confront confront and understand the truth more easily than if it were told to us directly it's it's a mystery it's a, it's a paradox why are we more receptive to fiction than than being given the facts and so the basic truths about human life are often better delivered through fiction, through the short story and the novel, than they would be delivered to us by the essay, by a newspaper editorial, or even by a news story. And this is because, uh, to paraphrase something that Mark Twain said, one of his best one of the best things he said about fiction is that uh, 
of course, fact is stranger than fiction. Fiction, after all, has to make sense. So fiction is one way by which we make sense of the chaos and the confusion of human life. And this is where we get to the short story, which is really one way of making sense of life. The short story, uh, you know, we can get into a long discussion about how it's different from the novel, but just think of it as a very, very uh, short, as, as a relatively short piece, I mean, relative to the novel, within which at least one aspect of, of life is, uh, is explained to us. Uh, not in the novel, we can talk about a lot of things, the fate of a country, generations of families, but in the short story, you will often find just one or two or three characters, maybe two or three settings, and I'm already beginning here to tell you how a short story is written. Okay, it doesn't need to be to have a lot of space to to make its point, and often that will be just one point. Now, of course, I'm talking about the traditional short story, and there are many, many kinds of stories now, in some of which the point may not even be that clear. But again, it's good to begin with the traditional story because this is how you master the form before you begin to play around with it, before you begin experimenting. Now, so uh, uh, what do you need to, to begin a short story? And I see that I have about 10 minutes left. Uh, what do you need for a short story? First, you need, well, you can begin one or two ways. One is you begin with with a character, okay? Uh, now, if you're beginning, if you're just a beginning short story writer, a uh, that character will very likely resemble you. It will be your story. Pero kunyari, iba. Iba? Uh, somebody, you, you give a different name to a person who looks and acts and talks a lot like you because... Uh, well, it's, it's what you know. So uh, you create a character, but again, remember, this is not you. This is just someone you created, someone you can manipulate, okay? We begin with a character, and then we put that character in a setting. What is in the background? Uh, by setting, I mean time and place and by time i mean is this happening right now in i mean in 2022 or did this happen 40 years ago or did this happen during the spanish times or even before the spanish spanish came so you you put that character in a setting waiting for something to happen. Now, you give that character a problem, okay? And that problem could be one of many, many things. Usually the problem is, uh, well, you know, this character, let's call him, well, let's call him Mike. Mike, uh, you know, is, uh, Mike is a 17-year-old uh you know, high school student, and he lives in, let us say, Malay Balay Bukidnon, all right? And he has big ambitions to go, to become successful, to become a lawyer like his grandfather, to go out into the world. So what is his problem? Maybe his problem is that, well, number one, he's poor. And, and he doesn't have the money to study in a good school. Or the problem could be that, uh, you know, he, he can go and study in Manila. Maybe he got accepted into, into UP or some other school, but he can't 
leave his sick mother behind because they are dependent on each other. Or maybe he cannot leave Bukid Nun because his true love, let's call her Susan, uh, did not pass Upkat. And so she has to stay there. And so he wants to be with her. So now he is torn between his ambition and his love. Okay? Now, so you have a character, you have a setting, you have a problem. Now, your next problem as the author is to solve Mike's problem. Anong mangyayari ngayon? You make him make a decision. What is more important? Ambition and the future? Or, you know, or uh, shall we say immediate happiness or satisfaction? And that is, in sum, what every short story writer does. You have a character, you have a setting, you have a problem, and you solve the problem one way or the other. Now, solving that problem is really the, the tricky part of, of, of writing because it involves a deep understanding of, of human nature, of what people will do, and sometimes of what people will do despite themselves. In other words, uh, what we often find in the short story is that people, when you push them to the limit, they will do things that you normally don't expect them to do. A good person, a good character will do something bad. And a character whom you thought was hopelessly bad does something good. <laughs> what we call character reversal. And the important thing to do within the short story is to show how and why people make the decisions that they make. Because the whole, you know, uh, at a certain level, the short story is really the story of human character, who we are and why we are who we are because of decisions we make okay and this is what we call character revelation again of course on another level the short story uh, can just be a story of events of things happening one after the other it's like jumping from one episode or one adventure to the other and that's okay but remember that as these events are happening you are also developing the character of the hero that that hero learns things along the way both good and bad not all heroes win very often they are defeated you know, you, 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 you read many stories and you see that some heroes uh, or some protagonists, uh, they do not necessarily win. They do not necessarily achieve a happy ending or outcome. But in the process of losing, they learn. Okay. And so that is also a positive thing. That is an insight. Uh, and, and I mean, for example, I'm, I'm thinking of a Greek play called Agamemnon, and somebody asks the Zeus, you know, asks, asks Zeus, the Greek god, why do you bring suffering on earth? And the answer of Zeus is, man, man suffers so that he will learn. And so... Even in stories about suffering, uh, there can be wisdom and insight. Now, having said that, let me also tell you what I often tell my students, especially my young students like you, that, that 
the easiest story to write is the story with an unhappy ending. Diba? Pag nagsusulat kayo ng kwento, laging namamatay yung karakter ninyo, o pinapatay, o nagsusuicide. In other words, it's very easy to write about despair and, and unhappy things. And maybe that's because of the state of the world we live in. But the most difficult thing to do is to write a story with a believably happy ending. A story that offers hope rather than just another depiction of despair. Isipin niyo yun. Lalo lalo na mga bata pa kayo. Uh, parang when, if you read stories sometimes or even if you look at paintings, okay, you go to any art gallery or you go and watch movies, many of these end, end tragically. And that's true. Life is like that. Life is very difficult, especially these days of the pandemic. However, if you really want to challenge yourself, write stories that offer even some glimmer of hope in the end because the characters keep fighting on. The characters do not simply yield to the hardships around them. They could be poor, but, but they have ambition and they are their character is, is strong enough to prevail over their current difficulties. Uh, and uh, there are many other technical aspects of, of, of short story writing, but uh, I think my 20 minutes is up, and so I'm going to stop here, and I hope I've given you just some of the basics of, of the short story and my, my friend Charleston will, will take it from there, and I will respond to your questions in the Q&A. Uh, thank you very much. At maraming salamat po. Thank you very much, Dr. Delisay. Uh, check out our ticker where our admin will, at the bottom of your screen, where our admin will flash some of your comments. Keep those comments coming. Uh, before we begin with our second speaker, let us have a word from our sponsors.
Sabi ba sa isu mabay Tayo magsaya itaas ang kamay Sama-sama tayong magsaya Kalimutan muna ang problema From left to the right ay sumayaw Lahat ay angat, walang madadang Kahit gano'ng katagal, we still kicking Walang papatay kasi andito pa rin Thank you, arigato gusaymas Salamat sa iyong gilas Ginha Pag-asa Isa kang instrumento Sa mga Pilipino Gumagaan ang buhay Sa araw-araw Sa pagsunog ay subok na Kasama buong pamilya Hatid sa tigin hawa At siya Kasama noon Kasama ngayon Magpakailan mo Welcome back. Our next speaker has published four collections of short stories and four novels. He has won the National Book Award for both the short story fiction, uh, the short fiction and the novel. He is a senior lecturer at the UP Department of English and Comparative Literature and an associate of the UP Institute of Creative Writing. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Charlson Ong. Uh, Mandang umaga. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, the graphic for this opportunity to young writer, uh, young students and would-be writers, and for continuing the tradition of uh, publishing. I think it's the only remaining commercial Publication that maybe like in South Africa and uh, South Africa, we seem to our interest. Anyway, uh, I am happy that our one of the books gave us a very good uh, overview uh, of writing and uh, what it what it's about. So I'll just pick up uh, a bit, no, and relate. Uh, my some of my experience as a writer and as a teacher of writing. I, I usually 
I, I usually begin my writing class with a sort of diagnostic. Begin with the first line. Yung mga estudyante, tapos sabi, sinasabi ko, okay, you, you continue writing, you, you, ano, dagdagan niyo yung first line, and maybe write a paragraph, no? or more if you want, but uh, a few lines, a paragraph is, is enough. No? So the line is actually my version of a line from a uh, Guatemalan uh, writer, si Augusto uh, Monteroso. I hope I got that right, but you can check it out on the, on the internet. It's uh, it's often uh, touted as the shortest uh, story ever written. Uh, so in English, translated, let me tell my version is: When I when I awoke this morning, the night the dinosaur was still there. So I tell them, okay, ito yung first line uh, you're right, no? and of course I, I get all sorts of uh, stories. No? My fantasy, my Jurassic Park, my, uh, my, what? my dream, my, my children's story, my, my dream stories. No? And uh, also, there are some stories of psycho psychological realism. The uh, stories of the people who are dead, or uh, sick. So you can, uh, so it tells me a bit of how the the mind of the each student works and what sort of stories you would write or she would write or I mean, interesting. So from an opening line, you can get all sorts of uh, stories. So it's very important to begin your uh, your opening line. It's very, it's very. It's almost, some would say it's almost half the job done. No? Uh, and, I, and I got this from uh, the late uh, national artist, I think, Francis Carceliano. He said, you know, you, you keep a, a notebook you know, para pag may mga magandang linya that come to you, uh, jot it down, you know, your first line. And uh, so now you have your gadgets, it's, it's much easier to do. It. So, uh, <laughs> Many years ago, I uh, was in Taipei after the Edson, after the people power uprising, and now we are headed for another election. And uh, I had work, and so I was staying in a dorm, and then one day, uh, early morning, about, um, past midnight, there was a huge earthquake. In fact, there was an old building that uh, collapsed. And I, I was glad when we were in the building, we were in the building. So when I came out of the, it was early winter, when I came out of the Madagunta, when I came out of the, to the veranda, I was expecting there would be a lot of people in the streets, not by some manila. But maybe it was cold or uh, it, it was deadly silent. There was no one in And uh, so there was a line that, that struck me. The night we met, the city was in pain. You know, you know, you know, and, and I knew I would use this line you know, eventually. I, think was, I, I knew then it was uh, important to me. So these are gifts of your subconscious. And so uh, I kept it in mind. I tucked it in. And much later, when I got back to Manila and decided to stay and uh, reflected. On events, uh, decided to write a story about my experiences in, in, in Taipei, and it became my first uh, line. So, in a story called uh, Another Country, it was published in the old, uh, in the revived uh, free press, I think, and it became part of uh, my first collection. So, so, so opening line, I think it's very important. Uh, tapos, yung line, no? yung line na bakit siya tinawag na madalas na tawagin shortest story. No? Uh, because it, no, it's food for thought and you figure it out. But it's important because all the, the elements of fiction are there in that one line. So meron, in, in my version, meron ng point of view, as it's clear. No? In Monteroso, it's up to the when he, she, he. 
na ilang third person. So, when they went, when I woke this morning, meron na siyang point of view. Um, past tense, meron na siyang action. Uh, waiting. And uh, most important, I think there's an intrigue. No? May intrigue na siya. Uh, bakit may dinosaur? So you can fill in the blanks. But uh, from the outset, you, you know, in a sense, Uh, something is wrong. Something is not right. Okay, uh, we will be coming back to uh, Mr. Charles Ong. Hello again, you're watching Aba. Um, uh, we will be, uh, please stay tuned after Charles Ong, we will be taking questions. But uh, before that, um, I'd like to read to you some, some comments that came in. Uh, we have a lot of... Uh, Comments thanking our speakers. Madami talaga tayong natutunan ngayong magang ito. From Meiji, I love, I love the way how you discuss and explain the difference between writing an essay versus a short story. Dr. Butch, really making it easy to understand. Thank you. From Ryan BG, wow, fiction is the art of lying in the service of the truth. How poetic. From Jonah Ricasio, kaya fake news is very engaging because they are peppered with fantastic with the fantastic with the fantastic ideas for those who like to be entertained or intrigued. From Mary Melody Remorca. Question. What can be the best storyline that one can write for children? Being a storyteller, I would like to present a brilliant story or theme for my young audience. Uh, marami tayong comments thanking our speakers. Uh, is uh, uh, if Professor Dalisa is here, maybe he could respond to some of the questions. Uh, I'll read them. Uh, I'll read some right now. Uh, from from Mona Tagle Tabernilla, this is a comment. Uh, Real patikim. We could couldn't get enough of it. More of these webinars, please. Thank you. Uh, from Sheila Kapili Galam. Can writers? use made-up words in realistic fiction? Uh, uh, yeah, yes. can I answer that? Dr. Denise, uh, please go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Well, first of all, you have to ask yourself, why do I need to make up these words? If, if uh, I mean, if w the word for it already exists previously, of course you can make up words. You can make up anything as long as you have a good reason to. But, but since you're touching on vocabulary, let me just say that words alone do not make the story, especially fancy words, big words. One of the first things I tell my students in fiction is to throw away the, th the thesaurus because it just, it just encourages them to use com long, complicated words where simple words will do. For example, you do not have to say he perambulated. You just say he walked or she expostulated. You just say she said. Uh, sometimes, well, if, if, we, if you 
use big words, then your reader will be impressed. That is oh, yeah. very yeah. wrong. The simpler, the better. Okay, I think Johnson is back. Uh, is is he back? Will I find? Charlson, uh, Charlson dropped out a few minutes ago. Uh, are you back, Charlson? Oh, sige, kwentuhan muna tayo okay. habang wala si Charlson. <laughs> Go ahead, sir, Butch. Yeah, yeah that, that was my point about vocabulary. Uh, you Use simple words because the simple words are often the most effective. Everybody um, understands. Uh, the short story yeah. is not a medium for showing off in terms of your vocabulary. Okay, Charleston is back. Okay, can I, Charles? His image seems uh, stuck. Uh, yeah, we can oh, fill in the time Charleston? while he's sorting things out. <laughs> okay. uh, uh, Professor Delisay, uh, mm. if you'd like to hear some more comments. Sure, sure. Uh, mga address pa sa inyo, no? uh, that's true. Okay. It's really hard to make a story that will serve hope to readers. That's because of mm. this place we're living in. Thank you, Sir Butch. Uh, another yes. com that's from uh, Queen Jeremy Garcia. Another comment from okay. uh, Daranyadi Varga. Indeed, we're very thankful that we have many people like Dr. Butch who's willingly giving us ideas and knowledge on how to write correctly. Despite their busy time, uh, they are here to teach us. Ginawa din naman ito para sa amin nung mga Ito, para sa atin din, Chris okay, at Mara, um, ng ating mga teacher. We all learn from somebody. In fact, one, one, of, my, one of my foremost teachers was somebody that uh, I think Chris already mentioned, uh, the late national artist uh, Franz Arciliana, uh, who was my fiction teacher. And one of the most important things he told me is, Write the yes. story that only you can write, okay? Write the story that only you can write. In other words, kung, kung maikakwento din lang naman ng ibang tao yan, why even bother? So, your story has to be uniquely you. It cannot be a generic short story. I mean, that's okay if you're just kind of learning the ropes, but ultimately, the most important story you will write is the story which comes out of your own experience and insight. And it doesn't even need to be about you personally, but it is something that came out of your imagination. And when, you, when we say imagination, that does not necessarily mean inventing new worlds or new galaxies far, far away. Imagination means that you are willing to, to think in fresh ways about the same old things. That you are willing to accept the possibility, again, that a seemingly good people can do bad things and vice versa or that wonderful things can happen even in the most desperate circum of circumstances. Now that's imagination at work. It is not necessarily some creating something out of this world, okay? But finding the extraordinary in the ordinary, that has always been my challenge. When do we regain you, control of our characters? I'm, I'm, I'm reading questions uh, right in front of me. Yes, sir, but... Carlson, uh, are Go you ahead. okay? You, you're back? Okay, nobody said Charles? Okay, okay Charles, just give us a sign when you're back, okay? Para, para deciding in time. I'll respond to some of the questions here. When do we regain control of our characters? Okay, uh, am I back? Okay, you're okay. okay, good, good, good. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, thank you, Sir Butch. Uh, go ahead, Charles. Uh, uh, 
Uh, balik na ba? Am I back? Can you yes. Yes. Yes, Carlson. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, Carlson, you're coming in a little choppy. Ah? Okay, nangyayari talaga yun, ano? Am Wala I back? Live. Can you hear me? Yes, uh, yes. Buti lang yung makasama natin ngayon, sanay sa live, tulad ni Sir Butch. <laughs> How are you saying? Uh, okay. uh, yes, Sir Butch. We also bring ourselves into the... Okay, go ahead. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay, okay. We bring ourselves to the reading of stories, no? Also, and so uh, a, a good, you no, know, reality is complex. So stories are complex, and a good story is able to accommodate you know, many meanings, you no? Know, in the end, you know? uh, And so in in that in that case, I what, what I thought was a very pat, a clear, uh, you know, humanistic and positive ending could actually be something else, no? And uh, I could see that it was intended by the author to be so, no? no? It could be a totally different kind of ending. So, so, uh, so if, if you can look at that story, no? It's one of the stories that I... I uh, and of course, there are also stories that don't move, no? That, that stay in one place, no? The way Edgar Allan Poe has uh, defined it, no, and these are the stories, mostly like yung kay Raymond Carver, no, that are often called minimalist, no. Uh, uh, you can look at samples that say yung kay Ronnie Diaz, yung Death in a Sawmill, no? the sort of stories na halos wala siyang adjective or adverb na ginagamit, no, puro verb, no, puro action lang. Ito na yare, ito na yare ganito, no. And so in uh, stories of Raymond Carver, very often, ang mga tao nasa isang room lang, no? Nag-uusap. So the action is all uh, through language, no? Through inside. Using language and uh, very internal. And if you have seen that movie Birdman, no? With uh, starring Michael Keaton, doon sa movie na yun, uh, he, he was an actor na dating, of course, Batman siya talaga dati, no? And he's trying to uh, direct a movie in Broadway based on the st story of Raymond Carver, no? Yung, what do we talk when we talk about love? You know? And so the device in the movie is to have him do a play, you know? Because the story is actually uh, very difficult no? to convey without something big. So those are, I don't know, uh, so, so may maraming classing stories, no? And then, so there are stories that move and then there are stories that uh, stay, no? And, uh, tapos, okay, so I think if you want to write, then you have to read, no? I think that's the first, first thing we always tell students is, uh, read, read a lot, read the, and the, read with anyone else. No. And then if you, before anyone else. No. And of course, uh, uh, go out and live your life as well, no? because that's um, and so, magiging uh, mas original, no, yung trabaho, no. If you go through stuff, no. So, but having said that, remember that writing is, is an intellectual exercise, no. It's an intellectual creation, and then so maybe your passions, your, your emotions might. Usually, we start with love stories. It, but that, that might give you your first uh, draft. You know? After that, you have to go back and look at it. You, know? you have to look at it. You have to shape you know? your story the way a sculptor shapes uh, clay or a carpenter you know? shapes wood. 
So you are shaping language. Diba? Your, your material is your life. You know? uh, your experiences, but your medium is language. So and then all you have is language. So it's important to master your language, uh, whatever language no, you, ch you choose to write in. Kailangan gabay na gabay na. There is this old story of NBM Gonzalez waking up and saying he, he has dreamt in English. No? Maybe it's, a, you know, it's one of those jokes, no? literary joke. Tapos, maybe I've... I'll take a uh, maybe a few more minutes. So I, I personally, I, I write mostly about uh, Chinese Filipino experiences. Some of you might know, because that is my background, and I believe a fiction writer uh, existentially, no, not just intellectually. You must have lived somehow how your stories. I based a lot of my fiction on my grandparents, parents, friends, friends, gossip. Uh, so to beginning writers, always listen to your family. I think that's important. Because by knowing your family, then you begin to know your society. Uh, I also basically have touched me, influenced me, writers story that was a, a tribute no, to the classic story of Manuel Larguilia, which I think many of you have uh, read. You know, how, how my brother Leon brought home a wife, you know, that I told us a boy whose elder brother brought home to the province, a young wife from Manila. My story is about the young man whose long lost cousin and brings home a wife all the way from Brazil you know, to Manila's Chinatown. Uh, so it's called uh, How My Cousin Manuel Brought Home a Wife. You know. When Argelia wrote this story in the 1930s, most Filipinos lived in rural areas, and bringing home a city born wife was still a big deal. Cities. And many worked abroad and had foreign spouses. Time alters the context of the stories we write, but the human issues remain constant. How do we live in my boyhood when a family friend invited us to a party to celebrate the return of her? He said he was coming home with his uh, Brazilian, uh, European Brazilian. Uh, it turned out instead to be a hefty you know, African Brazilian. Uh, how would the guy, this person's uh, China-born mother have reacted? You know? Traditionally, many Chinese people were biased against darker-skinned people. And fair brides were supposed to be petite and fair complexion and even bound feet in early times. So, paano kung ganitong, ano, uh, yung ganyang naging inuwi na bride, no? So, stories are, are about tips, about conflicts, spawned by the unexpected and the absurd. So I had my protagonist changing consequences. And another story is of a man, legally known as Lim Seng, who was the only person officially executed under martial law and its consequences to a fictional Chinese Filipino family. Uh, Lim was arrested soon after the declaration, declaration of martial law in 1972 and charged with trafficking in narcotics. I was 12 years old when he was executed by musketry in Fort Bonifacio, and I saw the event live you know, on TV. I remember the reactions of family and friends. You know? But when, the, when our school reopened, it was closed for many months, after uh, when now his father awakened him, during the dawn of the execution and brought him to see it live. It was open to the public. So it, it was, it surprised and bothered me 
anyone would want to watch you know, an execution, and for that matter, bring his son along. Uh, of course, uh, executions as that of Dr. Jose Rizal used to be public spells. You know? But the fact that my classmate was also a Chinese Filipino deepened my wonderment. You know? Why? I asked myself, did his father you know, even want to query? In a way, our stories are often answers as well to the, some of the deepest questions that trouble us. And in the end, they may help others too answer their own questions. Uh, contemporary fiction can also be inspired by folktale, legend, and in Again, some day decades ago, there was rumor that some were beef. Yeah, I'm sure you've heard these things. So, Memory Search was the first story to win. It's a revived no, graphic uh, awards no, in 1990. So it's about a wife from China who finally gets fed up with her oppressive husband and and deals with him deals with him in a savory manner. You know? uh, ginawa siyang dumpling and current event. Okay, uh, I'm so sorry. We are so sorry. Charlson has, uh, I think, dropped out again. Uh, it's Mr. Delisa is still here. I'll be reading out uh, some more uh, comments and yes, questions. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> yes. Hello, sir. Uh, from Mary Meloda. Oh, from Jane Ricasio. Oh, no. Okay. From Mary, De Mer uh, Mer Mary Meloda Remorca. What mm. can be the best storyline that one can write for children? Being a storyteller, I would like to present a brilliant story or theme for my young audience. Uh, if I may, sir, I'll, I'll read out the next question as well. From sure. Christian Pimentel, how do, we, how do you discipline yourself to write? How do you discipline yourself to write? Tips for budding writers. Can you share your process? Uh, also from the same commenter, Christian Pimentel, what fictional works do, we, do you recommend for us to read, which is a good, which is a good example for this genre? Uh, okay. Sir, what? Well, first, the, the question of what story should I write for kids, uh, again, that, that's entirely up to you. Nobody can tell you what story to write. Uh, may, maybe the best thing you can do is think of, of the kind of children uh, whom you want to read your story. Think about their situation, their specific problems, and write something about that. Uh, you know, it could be, and that depends on how old the child is. Is, is it a child of, 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 of five years old? Is it, uh, is it uh, a child who is like 12? And, and these are still children. So, so the, the content of your story should depend on the age and the situation of your intended readers. That is a good start. Is it something about out of school children? Or let's say about how someone, I'll, I'll give you an easy example. Uh, okay, you, you have a child who is, shall we say, a girl of, of eight years old, and she is going to a good school. She's well-fed, clean, well-dressed. But, uh, you know, uh, outside her school is another child who is helping her mother sell banana cube. 
and she can see that this child is of the same age, but she is very poor, she's scrawny, she clearly doesn't eat enough. So there you have a situation. How do you, how do you bridge this gap? in our society, which is very important right now. So look around you and see what kind of situations you can develop into stories. Now, the, the next question is about discipline. Uh, again, this is very important. Talent is just one thing, although it's very basic, but you need discipline to, to produce books and and much of that discipline will come out of your own love for writing. If, if the love is not there, if the drive to write is not there, then, then I think the discipline will also be difficult to master. You have to give yourself a goal. Like I always tell my students what I, what I kept thinking about when I was growing up, when I wanted to become a writer, was to imagine a book with my name on the spine, you know, uh, the book with your name on the spine. Think about that, okay, and how how nice that will look. And uh, and so I was very happy when I finally had my first book with my name on the spine. But you have to give yourself goals so that you will continue writing. Now, the last question, what, what was that again about, uh, Chris? Uh, yes, uh, I think someone is asking about uh, reading recommendations. Oh, reading recommendations. No, that's, uh, <laughs> you know, we a lot of us went through, at least in my generation, we went through the same things, you know, the little prince and then uh, uh, you know, See uh, Holden Caulfield, uh, Catcher in the Rye, uh, and of right, course right. Uh, a, a lot of a, 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 some Filipino authors too. I am seen Argilia. I edited a, a book of Argilia's short stories, by the way, some years ago, and and he's always good to read. Uh, even if he wrote in the 1940s, his stories still have meaning uh, for our time. Uh, my, my personal favorites are the short stories of, of uh, Bienvenido Santos and of uh, Gregorio Brillantes. Those are two of my literary heroes. You read Bienvenido Santos, uh, You Lovely People, you, you can read uh, Gregorio Brillantes. Uh, he has several short story collections. Uh, and, and of course, we, we have a lot of, uh, of, of excellent, excellent uh, women writers uh, in, our, in our literary history. Uh, the, the very uh, first one being Paz Marquez Benitez, whose Dead Stars is, is a classic all the way to later writers like, uh, you know, Joy Dairit, and then there's, there's Jing Hidalgo, uh, many other, many other. It, it depends on your tastes, but my advice will be for you to read outside of your comfort zone. Uh, don't just read stories that you immediately understand, but read stories that are just a, a bit above your level of comprehension so that your imagination will be will be challenged all right uh, that that goes for both filipino and foreign authors uh, maybe charleston will have his own recommendations to make go ahead charles Uh, please stay tuned. Uh, if you're just tuning in, we're this is uh, the Philippines Graphic uh, Graphic Reader and Business Mirror webinar. And Aba, gusto mo pala magsulat, master class on literature. Uh, Charlson, please go ahead.
Uh, for those tuning in from Facebook, uh, we are entertaining questions for uh, our speakers, Mr. Dalisay, uh, Mr. Ong, their special guest, Dr. Edna Agustin. Uh, Charlson, are, are you here? Please go ahead. Go ahead, Charlson. Oh, well, Charlson is sorting okay. things out. Uh, mm -mm. Okay. Uh, maybe maybe yes, I sir, can which, answer. Uh, would you like to hear some more mm -hmm. comments? Sure, sure. Questions, please. Questions, Nalan. Hmm. Okay. Um, here, uh, from Bobi Spiritu. Um, oh, there was an earlier question that Sir Butch was reading. Uh, anyway, one of her questions is, I find myself not knowing when to end my story. Any tips on this? So, uh, and she also says, suggestion for tell them, uh, that, that our, our, our children, uh, our kids who are tuning in, our students who are tuning in, uh, tell them it's about them. Kids love talking about themselves because they, yes. they have a lot to share. Uh, yes. From Sheila Apili Galam, uh, if I may, uh, Sir Butch, sorry. Uh, most writers I know plot a story before they write. I don't do this. I just have an idea and start writing. No. Is there a right way to do this? Uh, and one more comment, uh, Sir Butch. Gabriel Maricel, what is the most effective way to encourage pupils to write stories? Okay, so I'll, I'll begin questions. with the with the most interesting question there, which is which is about how stories develop. Uh, do writers know how the stories will end uh, at the beginning of writing the story? I, I will say maybe they they have some sense of it, and it's a matter of bringing the story to that point. But in my own experience, I don't want to know how the story will end. I do not really begin with plots. You know, plots are these uh, kind of uh, points in time where things happen, you know, from A to B to C to D until you get to the end. Uh, now, you, you, can, you can do that if you're starting out, okay? You, before even writing the first paragraph, you say, okay, this will be a story about this. So this will happen, and then this will happen, this will happen, this will happen. But however, I find that that kind of writing can be very uh, uh, limiting because you don't really have space to move around. You have to be prepared to surprise yourself by discovering where the story will go as you go along. Ganyan ako magsulat. I will I will start with, as I said, a character, a setting, a problem. Then let's go. Bahala na. Sampu punta ito. And that will depend on, of course, on the character and how he or she thinks and feels. Kasi the problem is, if you already have a preconceived ending in mind, uh, that that story, I think, will will be rather stiff. Ano, parang medyo pilit. Kasi talagang doon mo gustong paratingin. Pero parang, parang nagsusulat ka niya na may agenda ka. Okay? Parang pinipilit mo na kahit ano mangyari, ito dapat ang kalabasan niya. So what happens is that your characters do not come alive. I like it best when my characters surprise me. Okay? By saying things, by doing things, I never thought they would. But, but things which are psychologically valid. Na, siyempre, in that situation, ayun ang gagawin niya. At, at that point, buhay na yung story mo. Uh, how, do you, how do you end stories? I think they, they will end at a point where, where, where you feel that your character has arrived at a better understanding of himself or herself or of the world around them. You do not need to 
write the lesson of a story at the end. This is one very common uh, problem that I find with, with stories by newbies. I know, uh, uh, like my undergraduate students, I sometimes tell them without even showing me, could you please remove your last or delete your last paragraph? And very often the story comes out better because what happens is that they, they say everything that the story means in the last paragraph. And, you know, kasi iniisip ng writer, Naku, pinaghirapan ko ito. Baka hindi nila magets. Eh, sabihin ko na nga. Ano? So, dun, yung last paragraph will usually be something that says, and so Tony realized how cruel the world was and resolved to blah, blah, blah. You know? Mga ganyang ending, mga explanation. You don't need that because what you want to happen at the ending of the story, and this is very important, is for your reader to come to his or her own conclusion, okay? Whatever that may be, so that that gives them something to work on and it gives them pleasure to figure things out by themselves. Okay, may I ask you, Charles, may that be Yes. Uh... Okay, I'm not sure if Charleston is, uh, if you could hear Charleston, but uh, here's his comment. Oh, Charleston. Are you here? Uh, can, you can reply to the, to the question. Okay, here's, uh, <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, ito yung comment, Charleston, ano? Uh, sabi niya, uh, have a possible ending, but don't be tied down to it. The story can change. You are not sure what you are writing until you decide it's done. And ayan, oh, naka flash the screen. Thank yeah. you. Um, we have uh, keep your comment, uh, keep your comments coming, and and dami, ano? Uh, we'll try to uh, respond to as much as uh, to as many questions as we can. Uh, uh, there is a question here for for Doc Edna uh, from Anne Ruth. Uh, what per, what preparations did you undertake? for ISO certification. Dr. Edna, please go ahead. Wala yata ang obvious Dr. Edna. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Uh, as to our preparation for our ISO, actually the journey started in 2018, so it took us four years to finally realize our dream for our SDO to be certified uh, by TU Vinord. We had a lot of preparation from orientation, doing a lot of uh, seminars, training, write shop, and uh, we even had... Uh, our luck in uh, right shop to finish all our documents in preparation for our stage one and age, stage two uh, third party audit. And of course, uh, the synergy of all our members, the staff, everyone, of course, in the SDO um, cooperated. That's why uh, uh, we were able to have this award, this certification. Thank you, Dr. Edna. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Uh, hmm. Sir Butch, there's a question for you on the sticker. Sure. Yes. Have you experienced losing the will to write stories? In other words, uh, some kind of writer's block. If ever you did, what did you do at that time? You know, writer's block comes to every, every writer at some point. It could be that you just don't know what the next word is going to be, or sometimes you're disgusted by your own work, uh, or you're just tired and you leave it aside for days, months, even years. It's all of that has, has happened to me. And and what I do is I, I never 
when it comes to fiction, I never force myself into, into writing the next page. It's not like my life depends on it. Uh, at kung pipilitin mo, pangit, pangit din yung lalabas eh. So you set it aside for a while, and what I do is I do things that have nothing to do with writing. I, I, uh, I do things that I enjoy, like, you know, playing with, uh, with my toys, uh, uh, you know, my old fountain pens, my typewriters, uh, or I go out with my wife uh, to a Japan surplus shop, which we will do this afternoon uh, just for fun. Um, you, you have to feel good again about yourself. And, and then when your mind, or I, I used to play a lot of poker, you know? Uh, and, and so all of, none of these things have anything to do with writing. And, and so I can come back to my work with a fresh mind in a good mood. Uh, and, uh, and I also give myself little rewards, by the way. Like if I finish a book, uh, I will say, okay, now I can, uh, you know, maybe, maybe buy something small and nice, or maybe take my wife out on a trip. Uh, it's important that 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 you feel good about what you're doing, although what you're writing may often be very, very sad and very difficult. Uh, kailangan ginaganahan ka para magsulat eh. Kasi kung pipilitin mo, uh, hindi rin maganda yung kalalabasan. May we also have a response to the same question from uh, Ms. Mara and Charlson? Yes. Go ahead, Charlson. How do you deal with the writer's block? I think the question is to deal with the writer's block. So I think the first thing you ask yourself is, are you a writer? No? If you see you have a writer's block. Uh, very often, it's just because you haven't done your research. You don't know uh, how to go about uh, whatever you're writing. So uh, I'm suggesting is that just go out there and, and, and do your research whether uh, online, the library, or just uh, out out there in the world, uh, and find uh, what it is you really actually want to write. But very often, you I think the writer's block is a romanticized and you know, thing. Uh, uh, you just don't know what to do, or you're, you're feeling lazy about it. Uh, so just work. No, in the end, it's work. It's work, and research is part of that work. Not something that comes from from nowhere. So you have to know what it is that you're actually fighting on. Ms. Mara, maybe you'd like to uh, share your perspective on writer's block. Go ahead. Ay, hindi ko pa rin naririnig. Sorry. Ayan. Okay na? May yes. naririnig na kayo? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> yes, loud and clear. Writer's Go block. ahead, please. Yeah. When I, I come across that, I just quit writing for a while. I, I do not set aside what, it is, uh, what I write. I, well, like others... Like Butch and Charleston, I don't research actually because you're supposed to know already what your subject is, unless you need to. But uh, I just uh, maybe I'll eat, I'll eat, I'll go around walking, I'll listen to music, and if I can dance, I dance, or maybe gossip with my friends, you know. But but uh, I'm not a I'm not an agony writer. Eh? I mean like. I don't want to agonize myself. If 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 I I reach a writer's block, then I I cannot I, I don't try. In other words, I wait for the time that 
well, it just comes, you know. Iba kasi ako, hindi nga ago na writer. So. Sometimes, it, the aridity in writing comes maybe several months, it comes for a year. I mean, and then I just wait for for the inspiration and the dic- dictation. It's like a dictation, you know. Siguro iba kasi I don't write fiction, eh. I write poems. Kaya siguro, even when I walk, even when I go swimming, even whatever I do, if it comes, it comes. If it's black, if my mind is black, eh di wala. <laughs> Yun. Thank you to my co host and to our speakers, Ms. Andrea Ramos. Uh, thank you for that question. Uh, I'm going to read out some more questions from Zil Palacio. Oh, okay, great. Uh, from Angelica Gachalan Patiag. Uh, is there a required minimum number of words used in writing a short story? I'll go ahead with uh, uh, two more questions. Uh, from Gerson Bukaloy Lorenza. Fiction seems to be more real because we may ourselves believe it is our escape. Room, to be free from all realities we are now facing. Okay, wala pala siya question. That's a comment. From Jane Ricasio, have the Koreans developed their unique technique or style of story composition to make very good drama plots? Okay, uh, our, our speakers actually are both uh, filmmakers and scriptwriters too. So um, maybe you have uh, your perspective on this question. Go well, ahead. the uh, question about it's a question about length. There, there is no prescribed length for a short story. It could be, it could be, it could be six words. It could be, you know, six thousand, sixteen thousand. Uh, I think when you hit the range of maybe twenty thousand words, that's a novella, you know, a short novel. Pero, pero below that, anything goes. You know, it's drama. Uh, uh, you know, thanks to my wife, I'm a K drama addict too, and uh, I, uh, I I really uh, am, am mystified by how successful they are in 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 storytelling. Because interesado kalagi is ang mangyayari because they deal with family situations which are very close to our own family set up here, di ba? Uh, uh, they deal with with uh, corporate life, professional life. Although medyo iba sa kanila, kasi talagang yung boss nila e eh, uh, talagang uh, you know uh, they they bow to their to their superiors. Uh, pero na, and maraming mara masalimot din yung mga plots nila. Uh, maraming mga coincidences, mga eavesdropping, uh, mga biglang naririnig <laughs> o Ganyan, ano, o nagbabago yung karakter, mga, mga schizophrenic. Kaya, uh, interesado tayo kasi interesting yung buhay ng mga, ng mga tao nila. But I think ang bottom line yan, hindi sila, they do not lose their sense of humor even in, in very, di ba? Even, even in very serious kuno stories, there's always an element of of humor and often it often it's folk humor. You know, uh, they they do not tell stories just of the rich and mighty. They also tell stories of little people. So so you can relate on on, on many levels. Kaya uh, kaya um, magaling yung yung mga storyteller nila, yung mga scriptwriter nila because they they understand how human nature works. And that's very important. May I add something? Go ahead, please. Go yeah. ahead. Bukod do sa sinabi ni Butch, uh, I find all their, uh, whatever field they're writing about, I find they're so well-researched. You know, yes. if they talk about law, you so, know, lawyers, uh, corporate life, medicine, hospitals, lahat. Well research talaga, matututo ka rin. Tao sa doon lang yung puso. Yeah. Kaya, kaya drama adik. <laughs> Yun. Right. Si Miss Edna, tumatawa si Miss Edna. Parang kaya drama adik yun yata si ma'am. Uh, Charlson, <laughs> Charlson, do you have a comment about uh, uh, writing for television? And kaya drama uh, storytelling.
Go ahead, Charles. Sir. Yeah, uh, I agree. You know, research is important, as I've been saying earlier. Uh, actually, we just, since I've been, I know we don't know how to proceed it's because we haven't done the research. And in terms of television and all that, because uh, many researchers are And uh, that's important. So it's an industry. When we talk about television, K drama, movies, uh, industry, and so marami ang uh, magalaw. But when it comes to your short story, ikaw lang yun. So you have to do your own research. Uh, you have to do your own work. No, wala kang maasahan na mga researcher. So yun yun ang strength talaga. Okay, drama or foreign drama in general. Okay. You can see how many people are working on it. Every character has someone working on it. They, they do the research. They get it right. And the story guy. And then... Uh, it's important, no? which is the weakness, I guess, here, because uh, the, the economics of it is different. In mga local dramas, they, they have to get things done immediately. Yeah. And in time element, there are a lot even in movies. You should know that also. So it's, it's very limited. But uh, yeah, uh, do the research, no? so that's important. That's the work, actually. And if you know, you've done a research, then the actual writing is not it's easier. No? It's not so difficult if you know. We get stuck because we, we don't know what. We don't know what. Yeah. So, yeah, no? uh, from the, from the comments, someone mentioned the formula that will help us. Sa success niyan. Uh, ako sa sabihin ko, may mga inuulit talaga na themes and plot devices, but uh, some basics hold. Ano? Yung mga tinuturo sa atin ni Sir Butch at ni Charlson about uh, uh, character development, about uh, writing with heart, about uh, writing something meaningful to you and something that could be meaningful to your, to your readers. Uh, moving on, uh, from Marlene Coronel, Aba, napakagaling na speakers. Aba, gusto ko nang magsulat. From JB Bondo, I'll, I'll uh, what do you think is the key to creating a great short story? Uh, I'll keep reading para para baka, uh, more questions para baka kulang tayo sa time. Sherry D has uh, has mean. What piece of advice can you give to aspiring short story writers or fictionists who live in a very dynamic world? From Dev Katko in Bakuo, do short stories still have a place in the information age and the dominance of social media? Uh, from Raquel Luna Azur, how to motivate learners to write fiction. Uh, and from answering Cuban Zone, I am a bookworm. These days I find it hard to find compelling short story that would get me hooked. I find stories very similar to one another. Is uh, how do you write a short story that is compelling in either English or Filipino? Uh, go ahead, Mr. Delisay and uh, Charlson. Well, generally speaking, the best way you can improve your short story writing or, or, or find stories that are great or uh, superior will be to read good stories. You, you look for collections of, uh, you know, the best short stories, whatever kind of stories they may be. Sometimes, uh, today we have the best, for, the best of Philippine speculative fiction, for example. The, these are stories uh, which are sci-fi, fantasy, uh, you know, maybe the kind of stories that young people today uh, prefer to read, but, but you can read the best of them. Of course, that means looking for books and, and spending a bit on them, but you also have to learn to value books, meaning, hindi naman sayang ang pera mo doon. Uh, ipang babay, pambibili mo ng cellphone, uh, uh, hindi mo iniisip kung, mag, kung, you know, importante ba yun. But, but, but books can be just as, as, as mind-blowing uh, as anything you find uh, on, the, on the internet. There are also many stories on the internet that, that you, can now, you can now read. Uh, the important thing is for you to find find stories that appeal to you and to understand why and then to begin 
kind of imitating those stories yourselves. Uh, we, we, we all began by imitating our models, trying to write like them, trying to sound like them, until we develop our own voice and use our own material. There's, there's nothing wrong with that as long as you're not plagiarizing, okay, which is, which is different. So find good models, stories that mean something to you, and then try to try to emulate those models. That would be my, my, my easiest uh, bit of advice. Charles, would you like to respond to Yeah, uh, of course, I agree. No? You, you, have to come, you have to come to writing through reading. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, it won't work. You have to love to read before you can write. Uh, so read, read a lot, and and you will find your model. You know, this is what I want to do. It find that story that you want to, I guess, emulate but surpass. You think this is a story that I can do better than this? Try. Now, uh, and then the question: uh, How do you write a great one? Uh, Alala ko yung sagot ni the late Hilda Cordero Fernando. Stories you should read. Sabi niya ano? Uh, I wish I knew. And uh, so that's it. No? Don't, don't worry about writing great stories. No? Uh, yeah. For others to say anyway. So just, just do the, write the story that you were born to write. No? Sabi ni Kansar Solano before. Uh, you have to write the story that only you and you alone can write. Otherwise, it will die with you. So remember that. If you, if you don't write that story, it will die with you. So you have to write it. Uh, that's just uh, to keep in mind. And I think if you want to do it, you'll do it. But you know? hindi ka talaga mahilig, mahirapan ka. But anything you like to do, anything worth doing is difficult. Diba? But if you really want to do it, you'll find a way. Uh, remember those big books in, in Russian novels in the in the, I don't know, Dostoyevsky, my brothers, Karamasov, that some of you might have been asked to read. They're so long, and they were written during a time when wala pang computers, wala pang, no, they were written longhand. Even Rizal wrote, wrote, wrote the novel, the CD, uh, longhand. Eh? Remember, wala pang computers, no, no, typewriter. And yet they were able to do it. So, kung gusto mong gawin, uh, magagawa mo. Again, it's work. Yung iba sa kanila, serialized. Yeah. Like Dostoyevsky, serialized yung iba. Oh, may mga notes pa siya. May mga notes, may mga... May mga rewrites pa. No? So writing is also, basically, again, writing is rewriting. Uh, writing, as the, uh, others will always tell you, know, yung writing is rewriting. You're never done with the first draft. Uh, as a classic, oh, I just require, I only require one story, and then some of them are surprised. You know? They think they should write a lot, so no. But uh, I expect you to work on your drafts, you know? I expect several drafts of your story until, you, until we both agree that it's done. So never be just satisfied with you know, your drafts of what you've done. Uh, and writing is uh, revision, then, uh, concentration. Yeah. And be your own, I guess, uh, harshest critic. You have to be your own critic. And don't be easily satisfied with what you've done. Okay, uh, thank you, Charles. Doc Edna, you may want to respond to one of the questions. They're asking how, uh, how how to encourage or motivate students to write and read more stories. Yes. Come again. Go ahead. Uh, uh, yes, Doc Edna, one of the questions ha uh, have to do with, uh, has to do with uh, how to encourage and motivate students to write and read more stories. Okay. Um, in my opinion, in my opinion, no. Uh, in order for us to motivate our students to read short stories uh, and even 
um, other uh, literature. I, I think uh, the best way, of course, is to um, flood them, flood them with the, the different materials. Uh, in our part as uh, educator, of course, uh, we, we, we uh, always provide them activities that will, of course, uh, motivate them uh, to uh, be engaged on reading, particularly, of course, uh, short stories, because nowadays, not all students, of course, love to read. So what we do in order for them to develop that uh, genuine love for reading is to give them, provide them materials, and then even, of course, um, uh, we uh, uh, engage them in different activities. Uh, you can also visit uh, a place where you can have, of course, these uh, materials. And uh, inside the classroom for our teachers, they can, of course, uh, have a lot of uh, materials like this. That's one way, of course, of motivating them to read. Uh, thank you, Doc Edna. Uh, I've just informed that uh, well, okay, we're being asked to uh, to uh, read the last few questions. Uh, okay, um, from from Kimbert, I'll, I'll be reading a few more questions. Uh, there is one addressed specifically to Charleston. In uh, in what way can the use of local colors, such as dialect and language? Uh, be a big help in comprehending a story. I'll, I'll read a few more. Uh, uh, very sorry sa mga commenters natin na nagpapasalam kami sa comments nyo, but I don't think we'll have time to read them all, but I'll, write, I'll try to read some of them. From Kimberly Ismael Malik Dem, can we write a short story from what other persons experience? From Mylene Angie, oh, Angie Palaganas Ferrer, is it effective to write a short story using flash forward, flashback, and foreshadowing simultaneously. Uh, oh, you muna. Uh, our speakers, would you like to respond? Ikaw muna, Charleston. May tanong ka. Para sa'yo. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm not, yes. Hindi ko masyadong narinig, no? but it has to do, I think the question is dialect. The use of local color. The use of language. And so anyway, we... we uh, we we run uh, English, no? so it's go, it's already in a way a disadvantage, no? because we are writing in a language that is not commonly used uh, by most in the, the way we use them. We we usually code shift, as I say, no, we are multilingual. Uh, so yeah, I think you have to find your own language. Then no? I I use my language as a kind of I use English as a kind of representative language most of the time. But, I assume my characters talk in different uh, patois, no? different languages. So anyway, that's my excuse. Uh, so be careful also about the local color, no? uh, you know, local local color stuff. Uh, uh, focus on the character and the story. Uh, the local color will work. You know, it's, it's part of what you're writing integrally. Uh, what, what, what new, like going uh, coloring, you know? uh, so respect the integrity of your characters and uh, and language is another issue. You know? uh, you're writing English and then the other languages, so mahaba pang pag no opinion, but for the readers who are interested, I think I have a I something online, I think you can go to YouTube. It, it's a play that I where I use uh, uh, Chinese Tagalog, no? it's called Bus. So uh, you might check it out and then that's where I sort of use dialect. You know? I use the, 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 the Tagalog of my grandparents. I think that, uh, I think that one actually. If someone turned into a radio play, so you can use it. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll probably end my, my comments with, with this, that uh, the, mo the most important thing for me in a short story is that the, the experience communicated 
is is Filipino and human. Uh, and the language for me is secondary to that. You know, uh, NBM Gonzalez once said, uh, I write in Filipino using English. So think about that. That said, if you choose to write in English, then you are obligated to master that language yeah. too. Okay, so it's important that you understand how the language works and works maybe in a Filipino way. And that gets complicated, but we are not writing like Americans for Americans. We are using English for Filipino readers, which does not mean that it's necessarily substandard. It's not, but but we do follow the norm the norms and the rules of english so that we can share our stories also with with other people beyond uh the philippines there's there's no excuse really for for very poor language if you are working as as a writer in that language you 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 expect your doctor for example to know as much as he or she can about medicine. Ano, hindi pwede yung pwede na. Ano? Uh, so we expect the same standard in, in writing. Your writing, your, your command of language has to be really good. And where do you get that? As Charleston said, you get that from good reading. So walang lusot dyan. Uh, in, in summary, to write well, read well. Salamat. Salamat Sir Butch. Uh, we'll be ending the Q&A. Uh, Nag-over time na tayo. Uh, sayang, ganda pa naman ang, uh, ganda na takbo ng discussion, ano? Uh, uh, Ms. Mara? Yes. Are we ending na? We're ending the yes. webinar? <laughs> yes, we are. Uh, uh, we we'll are. move no on to the question. next part of the program. Well, it's already the closing remarks of uh, uh, Anthony C. Cabangon. We call on him. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I think others can still send their questions, pero after the program, di ba? So, if there are no more questions, we would now like to call on our publisher, T. Anthony C. Cabangon for his closing remarks. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead, sir. Ito, My ending, eh, sa susunod daw eh, sana mas mahaba daw yung discussion sa next webinar. Uh, apologies to our viewers and listeners. Uh, we miss a portion of uh, Carson Ong's uh, piece. So maybe next time we'll have to do some adjustment. And uh, it was close to perfect. So, ganun talaga siguro yung technical problem in, in this uh, when you do a webinar. It's always the issue on the, on the connection. So, thank you, uh, Mara and Chris, for being such a good host. We thank the literary community for their warm reception of this webinar. We are deeply grateful to Dr. Jose Butch Dalisay and Mr. Carlson Ong for their informative lectures on short story writing. We are beholden to the school faculties for encouraging their students to participate in this masterclass webinar of the Philippines Graphic and the Business Mirror. We thank the students and you, the lovers of good literature, for coming. Someone once said, writers, when they are good, open doors to worlds held precious and priceless by the soul. This morning, a door was opened, the door that leads to one who can write a good short story. Thank you all very much. Before we go, 
Uh, we would like to announce the winner to our group. Yes, uh, thank you, sir, and uh, thank you. Drum roll, please. The winners are for uh, for the uh, the bundles. The winners are uh, from Southville Five A Integrated National High School, Altea Timbas. Binyan from Binyan Integrated National High School, Josephine Briones. From the Rizal Techno Technological University, Angelica Sequinto. Uh, from De La Salle College of St. Benil, Darlene Bautista. From the St. Francis Integrated National High School, Jeffrey Roy Galvan. There are more winners for, uh, for the bundle. UP from UP Los Banos, Maria Flora May Matienzo. UP Diliman, from UP Diliman, Alexandria Garcia. From University of the Philippines, Cebu, Raymart Ibanez, or is it Raymart or Raymat? Ray, Raymat Ibanez. Uh, from UST, Jean Clarice Grajo. From Laguna State Polytechnic University, Felipe Dimaculan. Congratulations to the winners. Stay tuned. We still have the winners for the watches. The winners for the five watches are number one, Christian James Hapos from Jacobo. Gonzalez High School. Our next winner, Jomel Casabal, Magsay, uh, jo Jomel Casabal from Magsaysay Memorial College of Zambales. Uh, our next winner, Ina Abad from the Nai Coastal Integrated National High School. And our fourth winner, Harold Glenn Lambino of MAVC Pangasinan. And our final winner, drum roll, Trisha Ann Alcala, Rizal Technological University, Pasi. Congratulations to all our winners. With that, Sarah, we ahead. bring to a close. With that, we bring to a close this morning's first master class webinar on literature of the Philippines graphic, the Philippines graphic reader, and the business mirror. Watch for the second master class webinar on literature this June, which also happens to be the anniversary of the Philippines graphic. Bye. So, yeah. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Salahat. Congratulations to all. Congratulations. Keep your comments coming. <laughs> Kaito pa sa tayo. Say na.